Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I am Arjun Chaudhary. Here are the top stories that are tracking for you on Friday, the 22nd of April. Massive landslide in northeastern province of India killed 16. Pakistan authorities suppressing voices of people to make CPEC successful, alleged Gilgit leaders. And now for all the details. The Afghan government has said that forging peace with Taliban is no longer a priority. This comes after Taliban suicide bombing killed 64 people and wounded over 300 others early this week. The Afghan government has taken a strong stance against Taliban accusing the hardline outfit of deliberately killing innocent citizens. Our topmost priority is to deal with the Taliban with war as we maintain responsibility to ensure the security of our people, said Tawab Gurzang, a spokesperson for National Security Council. The shift in Afghan government's policy comes after Taliban insurgents detonated a truck bomb attacking an intelligence facility in Kabul on Tuesday, in which dozens were killed and hundreds wounded. Afghanistan's defense ministry is also said to have asked forces to use all available resources to eliminate the Taliban as it does not have mercy on citizens. Afghanistan's declaration of war against Taliban comes after it failed to bring the insurgents at the negotiating table. The Afghan government had been taking efforts to forge peace process with Taliban but the militant group in March officially rejected to join peace talks and instead launch its yearly spring-summer offensive. At least 16 people died in a landslide in India's northeastern province of Arunachal Pradesh. The incident took place in the northern border district of Tawang during the wee hours of Friday morning. The rescue operation is still on as some people are still feared trapped. The landslide triggered by heavy rain swept through a labour camp at a construction site in the area killing many labourers. Moving on, apprehension continues to prevail among the people of Gilgit Baltistan over the much publicized China Pakistan Economic Corridor or the CPEC project. Leaders and activists claim that the $46 billion project is an attempt to suppress the voices of the people of the region. The China Pakistan Economic Corridor has for a long time sparked outcry among the people of Gilgit Baltistan. Pakistan government may call the Pakistan-China Economic Corridor or CPEC as an inspiring model to boost the economy of the region but locals fear that the region will lag behind despite being the gateway of the mega project. Residents have time and again raised their apprehensions over the $46 billion project but neither the local administration nor the Pakistan government have paid heed to their concerns. Is going to be uh, uh, a project that is very much, uh, you know, uh, at the center of the interest of Pakistani officials and I think they will do anything, as General Rahil Sharif said, will we'll sacrifice, will pay any price to make CPEC successful and if that means sacrificing and undermining the interest of people of Gilgit Baltistan, they will go ahead and do that. Activists claim that China will be the real beneficiary of the multi-billion dollar project as the CPEC is their attempt to exploit the rich resources of the region. The Chinese have a very large uh, population in, in the Karakoram area. They're, they're, they're taking the, the silver and the copper and the uranium and so on. And this is occupied area, as we know from our friends from Gilgit, Baltistan. This is an occupied area which did not originally belong to Pakistan. This is now being used by the Chinese to have a foothold near the Gulf, which they have now. The China-Pakistan Economic Corridor aims to connect Gwadar port in southeastern Pakistan to China's northwestern region of Xinjiang through Gilgit Baltistan via a network of highways, railways and pipelines to transport goods, oil and gas. But people in Gilgit, Baltistan say the Pakistan government is least interested in the betterment of the masses in the region and is only interested in getting contracts and subcontracts in these projects from the Chinese conglomerates and add to their plunder. Moving on to news from Nepal. 
Nearly a year after Nepal was shaken by a wave of earthquakes, the country continues to struggle to recover from the devastation. Nearly 9,000 people were killed in the calamity, leaving trails of destruction. It has been almost a year, but Nepal is still reeling from the disaster that killed more than 8,600 people and left thousands injured and homeless. Tens of thousands of survivors continue to live in makeshift tents and huts made from tin sheets and tarpaulin, waiting for their homes to be rebuilt. It was just last week that the government began distributing aid fund to victims. Out of millions, only 641 families have received around 471 US dollars as the first installment of the reconstruction aid out of a promised 1,885 US dollars. Anger and frustration has been brewing among the people against the government as many wait for assistance to rebuild their lives. Some of the survivors are still haunted by memories of seeing their homes crumbling in front of their eyes and by remembering the loved ones they have lost in the tragedy. <laughs> The earthquakes which occurred on April and May 2015 have gravely affected the tourism industry of the Himalayan nation, which once was Nepal's key foreign exchange earner. Its world heritage sites, as well as mountaineering and trekking industries, are yet to bounce back from the double blow. Efforts have been made to revive tourism and encourage climbers to return for trekking. But there is no visible change, even though it's been a year. The wave of earthquakes in Nepal last year was the worst disaster the country witnessed in the past 81 years. The Kumbh Mela or Pitcher Festival in India is an act of faith and movement to people on a miraculous scale. The pilgrimage occurs four times every 12 years, once at each of the four locations of Allahabad, Haridwar, Ujjain and Nashik. This year, it is being held in Ujjain in Madhya Pradesh province. Thousands of holy men and devotees gathered along the banks of the Shipra River in India's central temple town of Ujjain to take a holy dip and mark the beginning of the month-long Pitcher Festival, otherwise known as the Kumbh Mela. Temples were decorated with colorful lights as people made a beeline to offer prayers on Friday. This is one of the four Kumbh Melas celebrated as the largest spiritual gathering on planet Earth. Singhast Bahat Matpurna is liye hai ki Kumbh ki apni mahima hai, Rishi Muni Himalaya se padharte hai aur is विशेष मुहूर्त का अनंत गुना लाभ मिलता है और जिस तरह से प्रकृति बदल रही है तो सिंहस्थ का लाभ पूरी दुनिया को मिलेगा एकता समता बढ़ेगी और लोग सब तरह से देवी शक्तियों से भरपूर होंगे ऐसी हम आशा करते हैं Devotees believe that by taking a dip in the sacred rivers they cleanse themselves of sin and liberate themselves from the cycle of life death and rebirth over 50 million people, including seers, are expected to visit the holy city located in India's central province, Madhya Pradesh. It attracts foreign tourists as well who mingle with locals and soak in all the festivities. Om Namo Narayan, I feel very good for my eighth kum, Ujjain second kum, same feeling, very good feeling, meeting family, very good time. Are, are, Madhav. The festival is celebrated once every 12 years at each of four different Indian cities, Ujjain, Nasik, Haridwar and Allahabad, where Hindus gather in thousands to bathe in holy rivers. India is a paradise for food lovers, boasting of not one or two, but about as many cuisines as the numerous communities in the subcontinent. Manipuri Platter from India's northeastern province offers a wide variety of tasty and healthy food items. The cuisine of the northeastern province of Manipur is healthy and nutritious. The Manipuri or Methi Platter predominantly consists of vegetables, rice and fish. 
It includes fish stew, fried fish with light gravy, fish intestine fried with potatoes and peas. It also has 13 different delicacies including a spicy cottage cheese preparation, green lentil cooked over low flame with various herbs, Manipuri curry prepared in gram flour and much more. I wanted to understand what is Manipuri culture and Manipuri food. So I came here, someone told me that you know, if you want to have perfect Manipuri food and you want to understand their thali, you must visit this place. Usage of less oil has been invoked since the old times in the province. Herbs and spices form a very important part of Manipuri cuisine. Since they primarily have their food boiled, it is only these herbs and aromatic spices that give the food the required essence. The northeastern part of India is a melange of various tribes and cultures. The dishes reflect their unique and colourful way of life. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. Massive landslide in northeastern province of India killed 16. Pakistan authorities suppressing voices of people to make CPEC successful, alleged Gilgit leaders. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time next week. Have a great weekend and good night.